Hello everyone, welcome to the GOE Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my series on economic geography of late. In this session, we are going to learn about the concept of manufacturing regions and it is also called the industrial regions. Now we are going to learn about manufacturing or industrial regions at world scale as well and also at India scale as well. So watch the video till the end to understand the comparison and also understand a wholesome picture of the world manufacturing regions and also the Indian manufacturing regions. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's elaborate and learn this concept of manufacturing regions or we say industrial regions. Now let's begin with the etymology. The modern English word manufacture is coming from the classical Latin where one word is manu which means hand and middle French is facture which is making. So basically the word manufacture means what hand made made by human hands right that's the basic idea behind manufacturing. So manufacturing or industrial regions are what? those areas which have a concentration of industries or manufacturing units that is important and has occurred due to favorable geo-economic conditions. Now two words geographical and economic. These two conditions if is there concentrated in a given area and the condition is favorable for the production of or manufacturing of various goods then it is supposed to be a manufacturing region. Now the word region if you observe here we'll learn in details in the lectures on regional planning and development but for now the word region wherever you see the basic idea is it has to be unique in its characteristic and it has to be different from the outside. It means the concentration is different from the outside. So inside and outside perspective, also the uniqueness perspective, that is what makes a region unique. So when we say manufacturing region, it basically means what? It means that that particular concentration of industries or manufacturing unit is different than its adjoining areas or the other areas, right? That's what makes the manufacturing regions. Now let's elaborate and see. So this is the world map here. And you can pause the video and you can draw a world map for yourself as well or you can take any world map and you can mark these particular regions. So we have five major broad industrial regions across the world. The first one you see here is North American region right. So this is where you see the North America and on the west coast and east coast the Great Lakes area here and also some portions in Canada right. So here you will have certain areas where you have the major manufacturing units, major manufacturing regions. Then comes European region. In Europe, what you see the Western Europe. This is the hub where you see the industrial revolution began in 18th century, right? So this area again, then other European regions also include the Eastern Europe, right? Other portions of Europe. Then you have Asian regions. In Asia, what is there? The entire this chunk, right? Including India as well as China, right? And other Asian industrial zones also there, right? in the Indo-Pacific, Singapore, what we say and some other areas, right? So this is what we say the world picture. And there are certain other areas in Australia also you'll have certain industrial hubs and also in South African region, right? And also in South America. So these are the major belts in the world where you have these manufacturing or industrial regions. Now understand the characteristic feature of these regions which makes them unique. What are the features? Large population engaged in industrial pursuits. That's the first thing that most of the people, large people, it means it's a huge population base that is engaged in industrial activity only, right? Then large industrial complexes in hierarchy, right? So remember the higher order settlements, lower order settlements, we talked about these services and goods in central place theory. So more central places, right? Then integration of some main industries with group of subsidiary industries, right? So a main multiplier effect happening on the subsidiary industries. So this is kind of an agglomeration, right? Then large banking and credit facilities, obviously the environment is given by these facilities for industrial hub to become, right? And network of communication lines, large market for labor supply, all these things are must. Raw material, labor, the factors of production, very important. So now I leave you with a question here if you observe on your screen. This question is what? It's saying that industrial regions of the world are very unevenly distributed over the face of the earth. This is a statement. The word is elaborate with suitable examples, 
right so if you know the answer you can write in the comment box below right that why this industrial regions of the world are unevenly distributed what are the major reasons behind it and if it is a 20 marks question for upsc think about it what examples are you going to quote right so both natural and cultural factors both the factors are important right so understand that it's not just availability of land or resources or just one factor it has to be a combination of factors to make it an industrial hub or a manufacturing hub right so let's elaborate one by one so first one is the North American region. Now look into the North American region, you'll find America and Canada mostly dominating. So in America, what do you have? In USA, you have New England region, New York and Mid-Atlantic region, Midwestern region, Northeastern region, Southern region, Western region and Pacific region. Seven regions are there and this is marked on map itself. You observe these regions, right? All the seven regions, if you observe, you'll find it here on the map. So this is how you have to practice with a small map and quickly understanding where which region is there. This is kind of an agglomeration. But concentration is here. This is the bigger concentration that you observe in northeastern portion of the US. Right. So this region, the fourth number is the biggest hub of regions in US. Right. And now let's look into the Canada. The major industrial region in Canada are these three regions. Ontario and St. Lawrence Valley. Prairie region and Pacific coastal region, right? So Ontario and St. Lawrence Valley is the eastern coast, this side. Here you have Ontario, this area. Then you have Prairie region, which is in the central portion. And then Pacific coastal region is towards the Pacific, right? So these are the three major centers or hub of industries in Canada. Now comes to the European region. So in Europe, mostly the hub is where? The Western Europe, right? These are highly industrialized country, developed countries like Germany, UK, Italy, France, Spain, all of them and which have great amount of variety of these products like engineering, ferrous, chemical, textile, ceramic, electrical, leather, food and beverages, even electronics, right? So you observe the diversity here in Western Europe. So European region is a combination of all these countries where one by one if you look in Britain you have Midland, Lower Scotland, North East Coast, South Wales, Lancashire and London Basin. These are the six important hubs in Britain itself. Then comes to this one, the Germany here, right? And if you observe the map of Germany here, the Rhine industrial region. Now see, this is the Rhine river here, this one. And this area alongside the Ruhr, this is the Ruhr region. Remember, famous for coal. So Ruhr region alongside, so Ruhr and Rhine region, this you can add here. This region is very famous. Then Saar and Middle Rhine industrial region. So you have Middle and Saar. Then Hamburg industrial region, observe in the north here. Then Berlin industrial region, observe here. And Leipzig industrial region is this one, right? So these are the areas in Germany that you should work on map as well. Now, France, if you observe, so Northern, Lorraine and Paris. So Paris is the huge one. Then you have a little Northern and also the others. Right, then comes to the Italy. It's very clear cut south and north divide here if you observe by colors as well, right? So northern region is famous for fashion technology. Remember fashion, Milan, Turin, Venice, Florence, all these areas, cultural capital, fashion capital. And then in southern you have other areas which are there. So these are two major blocks if you observe in Italy, right? Then comes to the CIS region, C-I-S region. What is this? Commonwealth of Independent States. Now, what is this Commonwealth of Independent States? Azerbaijan, Armenia, Belarus, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Moldova, Russia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. All these countries, if you observe here, coming under this Commonwealth of Independent States, which was formed by the dissolution of this earlier USSR, right? That is Soviet Union in 1991. So these are also the industrial hubs here. Right. So Soviet industrial regions have further divisions. If you observe the Russian, the Moscow Tula, Southern Industrial, Caucasus, Ural, Volga, Kuznetsk and then Central Asia industrial region. So this is what you are the subdivisions. And this is the map if you observe here. So you can look into the map as well and observe these dark spots here. These areas which are the major regions here, which is there. Right. Now come to the Asian one. Now this I'm sure that being an Indian you are more familiar with this region as well because here the major chunk is also divided between China and India. So what do you observe? Japan is one industrial hub, China, India, Korea, Taiwan, right? The major ones. 
Then one more thing that is important that this region, the Asia is frequently regarded as the dark horse because the future industrialization and also the market is here. Huge amount of population, right? So that's why it's also called the dark horse region that you can remember. Now, on the basis of concentration of industries and their output, Chinese industrial regions can be further subdivided. If you want to look here, how China is leading charts in terms of manufacturing, Manchuria, Yanzhe, North China, South China and several other regions. Observe it here. These are the major regions in China where you have their industrial hub, right? That's where China is producing all the goods. Now, come to the Indian industrial region, which we have also looked in the previous lectures in the secondary sector of economy. Here, what you have is these seven to nine factors which are available that facilitates India. So port facilities, right? For example, Kolkata port, right? The earlier one, you have Hooghly belt here. Then you have good transportation facility through rail, road, waterways. Then you have mineral hub in Chota Nagpur region. You observe here this play to part. Then you have extensive hinterland over eastern India and also science and technology development that led to this kind of hub development right cheap available labor force right so all the labor is concentrated here in north india up bihar and several other areas and entrepreneur ability of the foreign and national bourgeois that is very important so right from the pre-british right from the moguls to british to current you observe the industrial trend in india right from the handicrafts and hand looms to the power looms to industrialization now gradually picking up Right? So that's what is happening and these are the major bells if you observe here. Clearly on the map, Gurugram Delhi Merit, Hooghly Belt, Chota Nagpur Plateau, Vishagapatnam, Bangalore Tamil Nadu, Kollam Tiruvananthapuram, Mumbai Pune and Ahmedabad Vadodara. Right? So these are the major bells in Indian industrial region for that matter. Now comes to the other areas in Asia. Right? What are those? Swal, Chongtu, Tejong, Tegu, Pohang, Ulsal and several others and also Hong Kong and Singapore are the most important ones as well. Apart from that you have Karachi in Pakistan, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia and Kuwait. These are the other centers. You can locate them on map, right? These are the major hubs in Asia. This is the distribution in other portions of the Asia apart from what we saw in China and in India. So what we learn here is the overview of the world manufacturing hub how it is there, what are the locational factors involved, where it is distributed, right from the North America, South America to Europe, to Asia, to the other portions in Asia, right? So you can figure out a world pattern and also you can emphasize on China and India as well if you really want to make it to the answer writing. So you can understand this entire picture of manufacturing units, their products, their leading in the market, in which sector are they leading, which kind of producers specialized where, that you can figure out and understand through maps. That's what the purpose of this lecture was. So now, when we have understood in details about the world manufacturing regions and also Indian manufacturing regions, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking about various other topics of economic geography like special economic zones and others. So stay tuned, keep learning, keep watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share the videos with others as well.